Hello traders, it's Samurai Trader here. Welcome to this video on swing trading. It's been quite some time since I've recorded a video on swing trading and I've actually was contacted by one of our members that wishes to potentially swing trade the micro ES. So we're going to look at a number of charts on the micro ES and some of the key considerations when it comes to swing trading now what I cover here whether you trade futures Forex or stocks of course you can apply to all markets and also all time frames the principles are exactly the same the markets are fractal in nature meaning the patterns that you see on a one week chart you'll see on a 30 second chart or a 233 tick chart every market you have a fractal within a fractal once you really start to understand that it makes a really huge difference to your trading hence when we're trading with say three anchor charts sorry with an entry chart and two anchor charts the same pattern that we see on our entry chart we will see just in a much bigger way on say the anchor chart too now we I do need to pull up the disclaimer there we go so there is a risk in trading uh, please feel free to pause the recording to view the disclaimer now I'm going to attempt to keep this video uh, to about 30 maybe 40 minutes if we go over that what I might do is do a part two so we'll just see how we go with the timing and as I state in this slide we apply the exact same principles to swing trading as we do today trading so what we're really looking at doing when we do our swing trading is say looking for a pullback a retracement you might be using a time based chart a Renko or a range or a volume it doesn't really matter and we wish to be trading in the direction of the higher time frame so as a minimum we really want to be looking at if say if we're trading a four hour chart a 240 minute chart we want to be trading in the direction of a daily chart in that particular case and we'll discuss the various types of options when it comes to that but please remember you the best trade you'll ever have is where we see a retracement a pullback preferably back to say either the, the 34 EMA or back to the 89 EMA and we have what we call a 2B setup now one of the key considerations when it comes to swing trading is the maximum risk per trade and you hear me talk about this regularly in our day trading videos I still see promotional materials put out by other educators or on the internet or even in books where they still say it's okay if you swing trading to have a 5% risk and even day trading a 5% risk I believe it's very dangerous we need to stick within a maximum rule of 2% uh, now certainly you, you might risk more because one of the challenges we've got with swing trading is that we're going to have less trades set up so therefore some traders think well because I've got less trades I can risk five or even ten percent of my account on that trade but when it comes back to the law of probabilities you're still going to have your stop outs and it's not like when you're say day trading when you're really uh, uh, closely monitoring the trade you see one of the advantages of day trading is that your stops are much smaller yet when we swing trade we might be say going to work and letting the trade work its way through throughout the, throughout the day to either stop us out or to hit our target we generally have got much larger stop losses so that's one key consideration so let's just say you're swing trading and you've got a stop loss here of $200 now that's a massive by the way if you're trading the micros that's a massive stop loss okay uh, if you're trading the micro ES where it's a uh, dollar 25 a tick and actually I've got my calculator here let me just quickly put that in 1.25 it means you've got a 160 tick stop which is huge Okay, that's a 40 point stop which is massive so it's very unlikely you're going to have stops anywhere near that when you're trading the micros but a maximum risk would dictate that you need to have a ten thousand dollar account now as you go along and as I promote with day trading also eventually we wish to lower our risk to one percent that would mean you'd need a twenty thousand dollar account where normally 
at that level we would probably only need a two to three thousand dollar account and still maintain a fairly wide stop if we were day trading however for some they need to uh, start off by swing trading and you know what some traders even prefer swing trading not everyone's going to be a day trader because one of the big advantages of swing trading you've got more time to think about setting the trade analyzing the chart uh, using your fib levels etc so as I state down the bottom here if you wish to swing trade and do not have a 10,000 uh, uh, I should actually say a ten thousand dollar account there why not start with the micro futures or the uh, Forex mini contracts whilst you build your account now uh, and by the way you may notice and sorry about seeing the slides on the side here um, uh, my staff have told me I've got to go to what is it uh, 19 uh, 1 uh, 1920 by whatever it is size to fit on YouTube nowadays <laughs> um, so I apologize for that so the type of charts that we use we've got uh, time-based charts which is probably uh, not probably it is definitely the most um, favored type of chart when it comes to swing trading we've got tick charts volume range and Renko and most of you know I love trading using both tick and Renko mind you range is also an excellent choice and we have an excellent setup called the rule of two that kicks butt with range charts so we'll have a quick look at uh, time-based charts and range and Renko I'll give you some options but first of all I just want to make sure that everyone's got it very very clear on how I select the time frames okay first of all it's very important that you uh, if you like fib numbers and uh, we've got a lot of traders now and you'll make sorry let me go back there you'll notice that most of my charts now if I can are based on fib numbers and the reason for that is so many of my members use fib numbers otherwise uh, normally I would just use the closest number and I'll show you what I mean in a moment so if you do wish to use Fibonacci numbers here's the sequence that we use now typically if we are day trading we would say use a 144 tick chart with an anchor chart one of 377 and 987 we always jump up in a sequence of three so if you're trading during the globe session and the markets very slow we would use a five uh, 55 tick for our entry chart a 144 because that's the nearest number three times uh, 144 and the next one above for anchor chart 2 would be 377 so you can always come back and take a screenshot of that now also I should point out that what I've done is I've opened up a little folder on my Google Drive called swing trading where you'll see a number of uh, recordings now in some of those I refer to uh, day trading as well but the same principle applies because when it comes to swing trading we're going to use exactly the same setups except on a larger time frame so there's a number of recordings there that explain in detail how I set the time frames there's also a video I did four years ago on swing trading as well that may help now I also mentioned the rule of two now in the uh, where is it the strategy PowerPoint folder let me just try to find it there there is a principal PowerPoint there on the rule of two where I go through in detail in a, in a PowerPoint there on the rules of the rule of two which is pretty much exclusive to range charts now when it comes to Renko we have the rule of one uh, but you know look it's going to be go beyond the scope of this video but there is the rule of two when it comes to range charts because I know a lot of traders are really interested and use the rule of two on range for swing trading now on the next one besides Fibonacci numbers the next thing here is is our stops our stop losses now I like to place my stop one tick or maybe even a little more a couple of ticks below or above the closest swing high or low when it comes to swing trading normally I'll be placing my stop if I was day trading one tick above or below but at the same time we may consider to have a fixed stop meaning we don't want to have the stop 
too large and let's just say here that if it exceeded our 2% if we needed to say have a stop because the markets moving fairly quickly that was three or four percent above um, uh, it was it's above our um, normal 2% we may still run with that not place our stop under the closest swing low but be above it or below it that is to just take an added risk that hey we're a momentum trader the markets moving it's not going to come back but your stops are very important then we're going to look at targets we need to consider our targets now if you're swing trading you may choose to have a fixed target in case the market spikes uh, or really moves rapidly so if you're swing trading you're at work on your dome you're going to have a bracket ordering usually that is our entry our stop and our target is going to be there so if we are at work and it hits our target and thankfully with many trading platforms now you can even put in place a trailing stop if you're at work so therefore um, you don't want to go and give back if you're up say uh, 15 20 points on your trade during the day or pips depending on what sort of market you're trading you don't want to give that back you want to be trailing that is to get to break even and then start to lock in some of that profit that's also very important now if we're swing trading and we're coming up to a floor pivot now if it's a daily pivot and you're swing trading time and time again you'll go through those that's where you may consider the weekly pivots but also we want to consider the anchor chart major EMAs on the higher time frames this well these areas are underestimated that is so if we have a dip on our entry chart and on our anchor chart well above we start to head back up but well above we tend to see or we do see that the say the anchor chart to 200 EMA is say 30 points above this is on a higher time frame okay if this is when you're swing trading just be aware that time and time again we bounce off the 89 EMA and the 200 EMA on anchor charts it happens every day in fact they make great reversal trades so be very aware of any areas in front of you any areas support or resistance where you may get a bounce now you may be prepared for that and that is you've got a wide enough stop and you're at work you know that it's just part of a glitch but normally in day trading we'd exit you can always get back into the market so remember that weekly pivots are price magnets as are the major EMAs now this is a formula that we use now even though this one I'm really talking about day trading the exact same principle applies so if you're using a time-based chart a tick or a volume your entry chart anchor chart and anchor chart 2 you want to see them three times higher than each other so say if you're using trading with the ES and you've got a 500 tick chart that's my entry chart well then I would want to have my anchor chart 1 as a 1500 tick chart I would then have that's some um, three times higher than the 500 the next one is anchor chart 2 I want to have that um, uh, three times higher again than anchor chart 1 so you can see there that we've got 500 three times higher is 1500 1500 three times higher is 4500 now let's consider Fibonacci numbers because they're not going to be exactly um, three times higher and that's okay uh, close enough is good enough so if you've got a, uh, a tick uh, 610 tick which is a fib, fib number what's th what's your closest fib number three times um, uh, higher it's 1597 1597 what's the closest fib number three times higher than that it's 4181 all right so and it, once again close enough is good enough looks like a duck walks like a duck quacks like a duck it's a duck okay uh, and do you have to use fib numbers um, I'm not going to get into the debate with all my fib mem members but we've got uh, a lot of traders using round numbers and they do mighty fine so it just depends on your philosophy now so that's tick volume 
um, uh, and time based charts you want to always have them in approximate three times higher now when it comes to Renko and range chart because these charts set up differently and plot differently you want to have them 1.7 times to two times higher than the closest lower time frame so in other words let's just say here that you were setting up a four tick Renko is your entry chart if you're swing trading you may make that uh, say on the ES it might be a four point Renko you would multiply that by 1.75 times so if that was four points uh, four points multiplied by 1.75 comes to seven so my entry chart is four points and just to be clear it could be two points it could be ten points whatever size and we'll talk about that in a moment you multiply that by the ideal number is 1.75 now when it comes to uh, your anchor chart 2 you take you the measurement of your anchor chart uh, 1 and multiply that by 1.7 times and that would give you 12.25 now what if you're using numbers that don't round off exactly here because we're using increments on say if you're trading the micro or say if you're trading the ES or the micro or the NQ you can break that down but if you're trading a really lower time frame you may not be able to get exactly 1.75 sometimes you're going to have to use um, uh, a figure of um, uh, say two times and in fact 1.75 by 7 comes to 12.25 you might round that down to be only a 12 Renko or a range whatever close it doesn't have to be exact traders okay close enough uh, is good enough now when it comes to uh, trading using time-based charts we tend to find that the most popular time-based charts for day trading are your one minute your three your five fifteen etc okay your four hour of course which is your 240 and then your daily now for swing trading you'll generally find that many traders will use time permitting uh, a 60 minute chart to time their entries for well, that is uh, one hour four hour then the daily weekly and monthly now you can also have overkill that is you'll probably if you're setting up your anchor charts you may choose to have a one hour four hour and a daily okay if you're swing trading for the short term now the further we get out when we start to weekly and monthly trading we're really becoming starting to what we call position trade over much larger time periods so it's more position trading at that stage so I mentioned and actually I should have actually removed that other slide there where I had to, on targets because I've got another more detailed one here now one of the questions that we're always asking ourselves when it comes to trading where is price heading now yes we, we want to know where's my entry where's my stop loss goes but once we enter where's my stop loss go but once we enter we want to know where is price heading to I want to see above or below depending whether I'm long or short where's my closest pivot level where is uh, support resistance or round numbers or uh, EMAs on a higher time frame so it's very very important now we can use exits such as ATR stops and a whole range of things many traders of course when it comes to uh, uh, day and swing trading will use high Kanashi you've got lots of options okay but you've got to plan that exit now as one of the strategies when it comes to day trading one of the strategies is using fractal trend line breaks we were trading a very very successful strategy for day trading going back many years ago and I'll show you a screenshot in a moment which kicked butt day in day out provided you were trading markets that trended okay so if you go into a choppy market no matter what you've got usually unless you're a true scalper you're going to uh, get your butt kicked okay but the strategy was trading fractals now fractals uh, where you've got and if you just look at your hand okay that's your middle finger okay there if you're looking at your left hand let me <laughs> there's your thumb 
that's your middle finger that's the highest point so you got two lower points on either side that is a fractal then you can have an uncommon fractal where they're not exactly uh, uh, lower higher higher this is an even higher high but then you correct okay so you can have uncommon fractals there now fractals are really interesting when you start to look at trading and where they come in play is really giving you ideal points to draw your trend lines in so we can see we would have had a fractal just there two highs on a two higher points on either side and here and so with fractals and fortunately now there's a lot of indicators here and with ours where it plots a dot but you can get fractal indicators for virtually every platform now and you use these for drawing your trend lines so if we look at this right here this is on a forex so this is going back to 2009 so 11 years ago on a seven range which we were using for trading in this case the euro dollar and once again you get fractals in every market and the markets are fractal in nature this could be a 70 range and we would still get fractal setting up it could be a two range could be a 25 range the same principle applies there is two lower candles on either side and we use these to draw fractals and in this particular case when we have a break a close on or below the fractal point we buy or sell in this particular strategy we would go to scalp 20 pips either way we had a stop loss of a maximum of 20 and our target was 20 now as I mentioned it's important there like here for an example we go along there we then had a reversal signal to stop and reverse here so you you, you bought here but then you had that was your exit signal to stop and reverse then there was our exit okay so there was a stop and reverse strategy but it works brilliantly in trending market so it works really well uh, in swing trading as well so let's start to have a look at the charts how are we going for time 22 minutes so I'll keep going with this uh, I think we're going to fit it all in so what we've got before us here is a range chart so the time frame that you're going to use in the end whether you're day trading or whether you're swing trading uh, is it tradable meaning does it suit the time frame so if you're a say a really active scalper instead of using an eight tick or this is in this particular case this was um, eight points on the MES you might use a four tick or a one point chart so you're going to adjust the chart settings to what suits you now you may notice here that I've got a range chart there of eight in this case I've only got one anchor chart over here so remember that slide we want to be trading with our trend trades in the direction of the higher time frame so if we go and take eight points which is what that is so eight by 1.75 comes to 14 exactly so you'll see there that my anchor chart is 1.7 times higher why do I want to do that well notice here that right here what have I got I've got there a 2b setup why is this a 2b I've got a bounce here on the 200 and over here on my anchor chart I've got a bounce on the 89 so that is what we call a 2b now because this is a range chart we've got a unique setup called the rule of two now the rule of two dictates or doesn't dictate as an option of course where you can trade once you have two higher closes in the direction of the trend now these white paint bars this is the super scalper now that super scalper did not plot until I had a tick above the second candle and what I recommend is if you're trading the super scalper as a trading strategy we wait for the third candle to close normally but if you're going to trade the rule of two on range uh, as soon as you get two high closes there is your entry signal rule of two two lower closes in you go rule of two two lower closes in you go so what we're looking at here is timing and you can see down here we've got the fifth uh, 26 of a fifth 27 so that's one day in between now right there there is a rule of two you've got a 34b 
now what we do want to do is look at our anchor chart what's the trend on my anchor chart whoops and I don't have a lot of data loaded there but we can see we're in a clear uptrend okay now this is where you may choose to put in a trailing stop loss or a fixed target etc we enter on the close of that candle where would my stop go one tick below the low or maybe two ticks because it's a much higher time frame below this um, uh, candle just here now you'll see that with range and with any time frame whether it be range whether it be a time frame based chart or, or tick chart that when you're swing trading you get exactly the same setups as we do on the lower time frames for an example right here what have I got this is a divergence trade if we were looking at this on its own this is very clearly a t19 I've got a lower high just here so there's my lower high and I've got a higher high on price and we look over at our anchor chart what have we got on the anchor chart we've got a higher high naturally this point here and I've got divergence there as well so what I've got there is very clearly a 2d and look at that for a, for a move and look how many points that was now remember earlier I mentioned that when you've got a higher time frame EMA coming up particularly the 89 over 200 EMAs be careful you may bounce off them time and time again we had a divergence trade we come on down we bounce on the 200 so as we can see that is also a price magnet and a um, reversal point but on the anchor chart it's an 89 so what you'll learn and let me just put some more data on here what you'll learn is these are key points so let me just go for that uh, for two months back on that one and just bring that back how much data did I put on this one let me just quickly check two weeks back whoops let me make that two months just take a sec so what I want you to start to notice is when you're swing trading and when you're day trading is just how powerful these turning points can be now you'll hear me talk about when we're day trading and and that's why it's still very important as a member that even if you are considering just swing trading for a career that is you prefer the slower time frame still study intensely the setups that we use when we're trading or day trading or scalping because the exact same strategies apply to swing trading they're just on a higher time frame for an example just here we can see the pivot levels have plotted now on this eight range we can see that we've gone through the floor pivot the midline pivot we've gone through the weekly R1 and we've gone up and we've now bounced off the daily R2 so this is why also you want to learn and understand the floor pivots but let me just scroll back here for a little bit more whoops so I won't refer to those that was on a, something else so what we've got see this 200 EMA overshoot now what's this going to look like on the anchor chart let's have a look Wow oh B you've got a 200 overshoot and what have I got on my anchor chart I've got an 89 B so I've got a 200 overshoot an 89 B do I want to jump and take this trade you bet look at the trend on your anchor chart we're in an uptrend the fact is though you may choose depending on your trading platform to put in a trailing stop here you could enter this trade using the rule of two I'm looking for two higher closes or use the super scalper for your entries okay now the next thing I'm now waiting for is divergence now I've now got some divergence just there so here I've got a lower high so we'll look at this here okay um, let me just see if I've got divergence here and bang there it is there so I've got a higher high on price there's my lower high or maybe that was the one from before and I've got divergence here and it was a different point actually but look at that move so you can see there that you get exactly the same setups right there this is a 2b why is that a 2b look at the bounce here I've got a I've got a 200 effectively a 200 bounce there and I've got a 34 bounce just here let's have a look at a time based chart now with this time based chart let me uh, I just wanted to leave the pivots here and it's crunched up at the moment this is a four hourly 
a daily and a weekly and let me just turn some trades off just here let me just um where we go here let's turn those off okay so what we've got there is the uh, daily pivots and I've got some weekly pivots here and so I've got a 240 a 4 hourly a daily and a weekly so if you're trading here for an example I've got a bounce right there and this is a time based chart just there and I've got a bounce here so I'm trading in the direction of the higher time frame now when I'm using time based charts so please note time based charts and tick charts I really do prefer to have a short-term stochastic hook as well okay so uh, classically your t2 okay so your slingshot type trades now you can enter on the hook itself now this is a too smooth stochastic if you are trading using a standard stochastic you could actually hide or color the percent D so it fades into the background you don't see it what we want to see is the percent K hook okay and normally I would have that set to five not four let me just quickly uh, uh, I won't do it now but normally I would have that set to a five period very little difference by the way so I want to really see a hook so I've got an entry there uh, over here I've got another entry just there now you'll see here that quite often these entries will get you in before the super scalper plots you've got another entry just there you've then got stopped you might have been stopped on that one if you weren't watching you've got another entry just here and a nice little move taking these retracement these pullbacks in the direction of the trend so trading your divergence trades your slingshots all of those your your two B's are just as applicable let's now look at the Renko charts now with Renko which is my preferred form of trading where I use Renko and tick because the great thing about Renko they smooth out price action as we can see here but one of the disadvantages of Renko can be these moves as well because at times with these moves we can also miss out on a lot of good information and this is where I'd have a relevant type size tick chart it might be say let me just say a, uh, a 1500 tick chart as a comparison with this entry chart I'd have one that sort of plots remember tick is based on the number of transactions so it can be a little deceiving but I want to sort of sometimes look at a tick chart because here I've got no additional entries really here but the tick chart might have shown me some little pullbacks and trend continuations now with the tick chart look at this here sorry with the Renko sorry here is a bounce right there there's a 2b you can see bang and bang I get a pullback that there is a 2bd which is your lowest trend continuation probability trade see I've got divergence there I had divergence there to there and you can see us rolling over but down here the second entry okay kicks butt thank you very much now remember earlier I mentioned about fractals now when we use fractals for trend line trading there's really you've really got two types of trend lines that we use standard trend lines and then you've got what we call micro trend lines micro trend lines is when we're drawing them over very short time periods and, and sometimes it's fuzzy they um, uh, they go in between so let me just remove for a moment the super scalp will turn that off so it'll make it more obvious uh, race super scalp will turn it off the fractal points to so see these black dots here these are fractal points so when you're swing trading you can draw a line from that one you're looking for fractal points in a close on or above so see that there to there you would enter either this candle there or that one there now what about where you have a fractal point and you don't have a fractal point down here this is where you may choose to look at or consider um, just waiting for two high closes see there's no fractal so there's the, the dot there they're all fractal points up here there's a number uh, or just saying bad luck okay 
because just here you had a 34b anyway so you had an entry here but with deeper pullbacks some traders like to wait for that confirmation Tom DeMarc uh, has actually written he actually calls this the DeMarc lines and I personally believe he's now trademarked uh, the name but I personally believe that um, his that, that his special way of drawing fractal points or trend lines and nothing really more than using fractal points now I think uh, when you look at it it's an excellent book by the way Tom DeMarc has made an absolute fortune in the markets very well respected but when you really look at it you see what he's really doing in my humble opinion is using these fractal points so where's my next uh, fractal point see you got a fractal there or maybe you can't see it let me turn off the little ATR indicator here I've got there disable so you've got a fractal point there and there so as soon as I had two fractal points ah drats it does this sometimes um, and I don't think it's gonna fix itself damn it let me just try that once more I've got to refresh the page unfortunately yep let me just quickly do this so I'm gonna pause the video for one sec now by the way I'm just um, refreshing the the page and we can see here uh, on a 550 tick on this MES see how I've got the fractal points you got a fractal point there and there I draw a trend line between that fractal and that fractal and I would initially do a trend line from there to there but then I get a new fractal point there so you get a false entry there and I do prefer to be trading okay you've got to take into account all other considerations so see there we got a there's a trade there but you've got to remember that this is a counter trend trade where do we usually bounce off the EMAs but I've got a little micro trend line I would draw there okay now with this fractal point I'd put in in the end we're going to end up uh, drawing a fractal all the way down here you'd have some multiples there but let's go back to the range it's just easier if I show you on the range let me just start pull this back up again uh, I want to do the custom and just show you here all right let me just scroll back just take a ah, sorry just got to do this data again here give let's just go back give a one month period just load this so over here just why that's loading we can see over here we've got a 34b a 34b now this is on a 14 point Renko so the setups work like just there we've got an 89 you've got an 89 you've got a 34 so all you're doing is applying the normal day trading uh, setups to um, uh, a higher time frame so we look at these fractal breaks here you've got a fractal there to there so you've got a fractal line there there's your entry now you could if you wished also apply that one there to there okay you don't draw up that way you're drawing down here so see you've got a fractal point there and see I've got a fractal point there now what you can do is draw a fractal line there now see how far down you are so common sense prevails if you see that you've got a big gap okay that's too far for me see here that I've got a fractal line break I'm fairly close to the EMAs and close to that okay uh, so what do we got there well there I've got nothing really but once I get to here is and by the way I can redraw from that fractal point there see how I had a fractal point there but my closest one is there so I've got an entry here but what else have I got there well I've got divergence I've got divergence on my anchor chart just here whoops trying to get the I've got a high high so I've got a 2d now when we trade 2d's where do we expect price action to bounce off when we've got a 2d we're expecting to hit the 89 EMA which is represented by the 34 EMA on the higher time frame hence on the anchor chart 2 if we get a 2d with the anchor chart 1 and anchor chart 2 I'm expecting price on my entry chart to to retrace to the 200 EMA for higher the time frame where you have divergence the more powerful it is 
let me say that again if I've got divergence on the high time frames and say no divergence here that's extremely powerful for a deep pullback now on fractal points there I've got a fractal point taking the closest I've got a break there but then I get and a, you can see there the second move then come off but it's only one of the ways that we can use or swing trade using fractal breaks but in fact you had a 34 B there you had a 2d there you had a 2b there why is that a 2b well if I just put on the pointer here you can see there you had a bounce and you had a bounce there is your 2b now remember when you've got a 2b uh, with a really strong uptrend on your anchor charts that is a 34 B on your anchor charts or even an 89 B get ready for an extended move so see see down here traders where we've got the 89 uh, B on the anchor chart we've got a 200 B look at that for a move so remember the higher the time frame becomes very powerful and this is where you can really go and hold on to those trades but if I'm a day trader I certainly don't want to ride through this but even if you're a swing trader you might put in there and look at that for a move each one of those is so these are eight point Renko so which one of these steps on Renko I call them steps is worth four points so look at that for a move there look at that for a move so it comes back to the time frame that you whether you're using uh, range or tick charts it's, a, it's about applying and going back over 100 trades okay go back over 100 trades if you're going to go for a fixed target go back over 100 trades and work out what's the ideal target for that time frame that you're trading with thank you traders um, uh, uh, just in summary just remember the exact same principles we apply in day trading apply to swing trading just on a higher time frame thank you